Hello, a very warm welcome to Fireside Chats. I'm Magla Pele, and today we will be taking up the subject of overcoming doubt. In this series, we look at a variety of subjects surrounding the topic of spirituality. What does spirituality mean to you? Do you have a relationship with God? We look at things like philosophical and spiritual integrity. And we ask you to take a very close and intimate look at how you connect with God, whether he is just a name and concept to you or whether you enjoy a real and intimate relationship with him. This series also asks you to consider um, whether your inner and outer world is balanced and whether there is room in your life for any positive change. Sister Denise, who is our speaker, has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for over four decades. Very warm welcome. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Thanks. So, Sister Denise, tell us, the subject of overcoming doubt, um, what level of doubt are you referring to? Is it yourself, others, God, life? All of that. There are four specifics that um, in the Brahma Kumari's teachings we learn about. One is that we need to have faith in the self. And that's a big one right there. Then faith in God. And there are many aspects to that. The third one is faith in the positive outcome of all events, all circumstances. And then the fifth one is other people. Mm -hmm. And we uh, regularly have inner experiences and uh, we experience certain situations and occurrences where we feel, um, you know, with the self, I, I, uh, I'm not up to this, maybe I'm just deceiving myself, um, uh, somebody's going to find out that I'm not good enough. These kinds of doubts arise in the mind and they interfere with your uh, forward movement with your creation of your pure karma. So this doubt is an enemy uh, and uh, mitigates against your success as an individual soul. Then um, if you look at doubt in um, God or faith in God, it's very subtle and uh, it's a very easy to feel, oh, there isn't any God, or, oh, God is busy somewhere else, God is not interested in me, or doesn't like me, or I'm just imagining, all these things. Then faith in the um, pure outcome or the positive outcome of every circumstance, well, that's uh, so many things are so likely to not work out that is really quite a big leap of faith that you need to do in the face of all um, what you see to really have faith that yeah this has a reason this has a purpose this will work out in the end it's a strength you know that kind of faith faith in other people is quite difficult because they don't do what you want they're not reliable uh, they betray you on and on and on you can always find uh, some fault and um, you end up plagued with different kinds of doubts. Mm. So Denise, as you speak, um, what becomes very obvious that um, if one has doubt in oneself on any of those levels that you just mentioned, it's not about the doubt, it's about your sense of self that uh, creates the doubt. So, um, um, Take us to the root of the problem, and um, secondary to that is how do you um, cure that malady of the spirit? I think that doubt in the self arises from the concept of the self that we have been given from the materialistic world. Um, you know, the self is not considered a spiritual being. You're just, you know, you're just a body, you're just a nobody, you're just not good enough. You know, there are all these messages that you get. And when you don't have 
access to spiritual information or you don't avail yourself of it, you don't have anything to counter those messages with. You see. So faith is something that not just going to just happen to you. You have to build it, you have to sustain it, you have to shore it up, you have to understand that it will be attacked by different forms of illusion and delusion and so on. And ultimately, sometimes it is said that all tests are tests of faith. As one is going about one's daily life, and you are faced with um, this um, feeling that I'm not good enough for um, to receive God's love, for example. Um, how do you manage, um, how do you convince yourself that your feelings, are own feelings are wrong? Well, that, that is very hard because um, um, the um, um, doubt comes not necessarily in the form of thought, it comes in the feeling, in the form of feelings. Doubt comes in the form of feelings. It's very important to realize that feelings arise because of thought. Mm -hmm. And thoughts that give rise to those feelings come from internalized messages that you have been told by other people. And so you have to go back to the root of it. If you say, I have doubt because I feel doubt, you're not really aware of what's going on. You have doubt because, you know, someone sowed the seeds of doubt in you and you bought into it, you see. Because if no one ever told you anything negative about yourself, you have no reason to feel negative, because the natural state of a person is very positive. The negative only starts happening when you get negative feedback from the outside. And this is why the way we human beings treat each other from the beginning of someone's life all the way to the end really makes a huge difference. So where do we begin? And first of all, we have to begin with realizing that I am not just a blank piece of paper. There's all sorts of things that have been written onto me, my sense of self, by different people in the external world from the beginning of this life, and maybe even stuff carried forward from a previous existence, you see. So we cannot say just because I feel something, that's what it is. So we have to look at that. Then uh, so how do we deal with it is exactly by doing that. And you have to um, bring in other thoughts that correspond to something that you know. You see, not that correspond to something that other people say that they know. So how do you get to know that you are okay. Uh, when you're in connection with God, the message that you get from God, very different from the message you get from people. The message you get from God is, you are my beloved child, and you are wonderful and marvelous, and I love you. Now, the other people say, God probably doesn't like you. That's a human message that is not originating in God. Uh, our problem is there's so many people who claim to represent God. And uh, this creates a lot of difficulty because the way people who claim to represent God operate mixed with their morality uh, tends to be punitive, tends to undermine a person's sense of themselves and actually sow seeds of doubt. So what you're up against is not just your own self, you're up against your context, your environment, your social environment, because that's where all these doubts come from. You mentioned something which I think runs very deeply with people. You said just because something feels a certain way does not mean it is that way. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, <laughs> um, most people 
um, will be shocked to hear that because for many people feelings are reality it's your internal reality and then you continue to perpetuate it onto one's external reality um, take us through how one um, separates that yourself from your feelings um, and uh, um, talk yourself out of a negative frame of mind again I would have to say that y you you think that you're just feeling something and it comes out of nowhere it doesn't come out of nowhere it comes out of somewhere you yeah. see mm -hmm. and and you think that feelings are different from thoughts they're not they are thoughts mm -hmm. you have verbal thoughts you have feeling thoughts you have visual thoughts it all comes from the mind yeah. and it's all because of sense perception or memory which is a remembered sense perception that is arising from your subconscious when it is triggered by something uh, that um, creates an association mm. this is how consciousness works the method uh, to bring yourself to a state where you believe that or feel, believe, trust that you are worthy to be happy, that you are worthy of receiving God's love. It's a continuous journey or you have to say, okay, my, my mind, my feelings, my thoughts, keep them over here. They're all about perception, which is deceptive. Mm -hmm. So it's not, not reliable. Mm -hmm. Go over here, your intelligence, the part of your consciousness that can absorb information. That is much more reliable. Um, two plus two is four. In the morning, in the afternoon, on a rainy day, a sunny day, uh, when you failed your exams, or whether you passed your exams, or whether people love you or they hate you. It doesn't change. Your feelings are all about all these variations. And it, when you think that your feelings tell you the truth, then you disregard the part of your consciousness that does tell you the truth, or you get it mixed up. So I feel, I feel that the the place, the point of insertion is you have to go with information. And the problem is misinformation. So what a spiritual knowledge does is it says, you know, the foundation piece of information, you are a pure, peaceful, loveful, powerful being of light, and you are a child of God as such, you have rights and you have worth. That is your identity. Now, nobody gets told that. Nobody. What do they get told? You're a sinner. You're a mistake. You're not good enough. You're a failure. We didn't want you anyway. You know, all this sort of thing. That's the message. So that is the place of insertion. Because until you change or challenge that initial message that is given to a human being as soon as they become um, compass mentis, as soon as they're able to uh, process ideas, which is a very young age, uh, that's when uh, the problem begins. And so you have to go back, 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 back to who am I? and what am I? And again and again and again you have to ask yourself this question. Who am I is so much more difficult to answer than what am I? So start with what am I? What am I and what am I not? I'm not a physical body. I'm not visible. The soul is invisible. So anyone who tells you something based on visible phenomenon is not making contact with you. But you cannot process this sort of idea as a child. You only process it in your adult years 
after you have decided to inquire into spirituality and therefore where the problem arose in early childhood or whatever means you have to go back and reset uh, your sense of self retroactively and this can be done and this is a very good method to use uh, but the initial thing is to again and again plant and replant and water and whatever this thought I am a pure, peaceful, powerful, loveful, blissful being of light I'm a child of God, I have rights and let's go and you use that to counteract the persistence of the internalized messages that you had received over the years up until the time when you start saying that's not true but you can't just say it once how many times was that message repeated to you in your life how many times did you repeat it to yourself how many, to what depth did you internalize it, you see. So you have to kind of take responsibility for perpetuating what somebody else inserted into your consciousness and then counteract it as much and as often as it takes to make it very clear to yourself that I am worth it I have value, uh, I'm not a sinner, I probably did plenty of sins, but that doesn't make me a sinner, you see. So your whole thinking is changed around. And the only way that you can keep it up is to continue to expose yourself to these new messages, to these teachings that come from the mind of God which restore you to your spiritual health and sanity and that is only possible when you're really committed to yourself. Hmm. It uh, does seem that a lot of um, inner healing has to take place because you're speaking of um, human beings who have reached a very damaged um, um, space, internal space. Um, so Sidonese, you know when it comes to fixing that which is broken it's a time staking drudgery of an effort. Um, when you've got zero sense of self-worth, how do you convince yourself that you're worth it even though you don't feel it? Well, I think it's very important to realize that you're not on your own here, you know. Uh, God is with you. God is talking to you, God is looking at you, God is supporting you, God is saying wake up, remember who you are, remember I am with you, uh, don't buy into that stuff, you know, this, uh, God will convey that to you through feelings, through signs, through something, through someone, through many, many methods, you see, because this is the time when God is, um, you can say, reaching out to humanity. I mean, humanity has been reaching out to God, but has felt unsuccessful, maybe been reaching out in the wrong way, or whatever the reason are. But now, the desire of human beings to be free, and the desire of God for human beings to be free are coinciding, so it can happen. So you have to take advantage of the opportunity. Mm. So Denise, um, for many, even though they have commenced this journey of um, um, self-repair that you just described, um, there is from external circumstances in which they find themselves a continual bombardment of the negative messages. Okay, um, You could be living in a country where you're a person of color and uh, the country's political climate tells you that you're worth nothing because of your color. Um, you could be in, born into a country where um, the caste system 
tells you that you're worth nothing and nobody. Um, we're so porous that we think we are our circumstances. Okay, um, help us um, understand how do you um, rise from that. I think this word that you used, porous, is a key. Um, because what we need to be is, um, you know, putting on a, a, a raincoat <laughs> so that we're not porous, okay. so that we are impervious. Mm. And the more we reinforce from within the positive message, the true message, the more we are unaffected or impervious to this bombardment. And, you know, there's an attitude that spiritual practice teaches, which is to be the, the detached witness. You're not involved. Uh, you may hear something being addressed to you, but you say, well, a person doesn't know. They, have, they can't see me. They're operating on the basis of preconception. Why should I even go there? You know, you make yourself progressively more independent, more impervious to that, and then you see if you don't take it in, then you don't have to deal with it. You keep it on the outside. You have to be pretty strong and resilient to do this, don't you? Don't you? Well, I think this is what our spiritual practice is all about, is um, using all of these different methods and approaches and um, concepts to build your resilience. And then when you are fully resilient, then you have done your work. How are we able to assess um, how much we've grown from um, doubting whether I'm worthy enough to be alive to becoming a person who has real value for um, the self and and um, the other aspects of doubt deserving of God's love deserving of respect um, feeling good enough how am I able to assess uh, whether I have arrived I think the way you assess it is that whenever the um, a challenge comes, whenever the message comes, how are you handling it? Because maybe before you developed yourself spiritually, uh, that you, ha you were defenseless against it, and it went right in, pierced your heart, and you know, made you bleed all over the floor. Uh, as you build up your resistance and resilience, uh, you find that, you know, it's water off a duck's back. It doesn't get to you. Mm. It's not your problem. Mm. Uh, it doesn't affect you, you see. These are the signs. Because, mm. you see, the tests will keep coming so that you can be clear about how you're doing in your development. Mm. Sister Denise, so far you mentioned the um, internal part of it. Externally, um, say for example, we have a situation of a student who is embarked on tertiary education, uh, which is very difficult, m and doesn't believe that he could pass, and because of that, fails, doesn't even bother studying, okay, and so fails to pass, becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, um, you discussed so far what happens on the inside, the internal work that you've got to do. When you're overcoming doubt, on, on any level, uh, are there any external changes that manifest themselves? Do you, or does the internal work affect the external, as far as you're concerned, or do you have to consciously say, now that I'm changing this, I got to do this and this and this on the outside? You do. You absolutely do, because the outside is a reflection of what's going on on the inside. So. As you change yourself on the inside, your circumstances change so that they correspond with what's happening on the inside. Of course, it takes time, because the process of making a change inside to the point where you really clearly, visibly see the change on the outside can take quite a period of time, because you have to make sure that it's solid, yeah. and you have to do those things that initiate the change many times before you actually see the change on a physical level. Mm.
if you uh, are putting yourself in a position where you are committed to yourself, committed to your change, committed to develop yourself, then you also have to resist those elements of doubt which tell you to give up, you see. So if you say, okay, I'm embarking on a course of study, but I believe I cannot fail, I mean, I cannot pass, I will fail, you have to challenge yourself on that, you see. I'm embarking, I'm doing this to win. Have a look at your intentions. Um, go with your intentions. You see, believing that you will fail is the same thing as doubting that you will pass, you see. So you have to look at your doubts one by one by one and challenge them one by one. Mm. And it's work. Yeah, it is work. Okay, Sister Denise, um, you want to share any last words with um, our viewers before you say goodbye to them today? I think the important thing is to make it very, very clear to yourself that if God looks at you as his child, his beloved student, his inheritor, then you need to start looking at yourself with those same eyes and stop looking at yourself the way maybe people who don't like you have been looking at yourself. And that is your choice. You have to exercise your choice. And I would suggest that if you look at yourself with the eyes of God, it's much more reliable picture that you will get than looking at yourself through the eyes of people who look at you through many filters of preconception and prejudice and so on and so forth. And just ask yourself, why would you buy into that when you don't have to? Mm. Okay. You're insulting your own intelligence. Mm. Okay. Okay. It's a very powerful note on which uh, we have to say goodbye to you today. And as always, thank you. Thank you. So, thank you for joining us. The subject of overcoming doubt is a very interesting one, a very personal one. Um, if you find yourself in the position where you doubt yourself, doubt that God loves you, doubt your talents, your virtues, or your own inherent goodness, Sister Denise has shed light into a part of the psyche that we ourselves are afraid to go to. And I hope that you were able to find something within the content of today's show uh, that motivates you to heal, to put right that which is broken, and to move ahead, and to know that you have earned God's love because you are His child. So we thank Sister Denise for joining us, and thank you for joining us. Take care, and goodbye. <laughs>